Been a couple of weeks since I've done a solo podcast. Today's conversation is going to be based around jujitsu, having hard conversations with yourself, and my upcoming program, My Fuck Yes Life. Welcome to the Rise Movement Podcast, a place where legends just like you learn how to raise your standards everywhere. Welcome to another episode of the Rise Movement Podcast. I'm Dave, and in this one, like I said, we're going to be talking all about jujitsu. We're going to be talking all about hard conversations with yourself, and also the upcoming mastermind program called My Fuck Yes Life. I guess I wanna start with having hard conversations with yourself. The reason why I wanna start there is because lately I've been mulling over this idea in my mind, and it's a phrase that I say to myself, stop negotiating with my mind. I say that over and over because I wanna build a life of discipline because Jocko's philosophy, discipline equals freedom. I've read that book a couple of times now and I wanna make sure that the more discipline that I create in my life, the more freedom of experience that I'm going to have to choose. The reason why I wanna talk about stop negotiating with your mind is because the way that you build more discipline is by doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing. The way that you build the resilience in your mind so that you don't have oh, the what ifs and I don't feel like it and you know, like I'm feeling off and all these sorts of things is to say, shut the fuck up, go and do what you're supposed to do. If you want this outcome, it's only gonna come through hard work, perseverance, discipline, consistency and persistence. You're only gonna get to the outcome that you want through the avenue of exertion and getting the shit done. The only way that you can ever get anywhere in life is by fucking hard work. Sure, some people have it handed to them on a silver platter, but that's not you and that's not fucking me either. The way that we get through to getting results is you put in the hard work, you sacrifice, you do the things that are necessary to be able to create the outcomes. Over the weekend, well, I guess we'll synthesize jujitsu here. I've been training jujitsu for three years now. I am obsessed. I'm still as obsessed as when I first started. I still have the same passion, the same drive. I still study on the internet, on YouTube, on instructionals. Like I still do as much as I fucking can. I train on average, that's interesting. I train on average four times a week. I train on average four times a week. That's a lot of training. That's a lot of jujitsu. It's a lot to put my body through. Every single day I'm thinking about jujitsu. I'm thinking about it because I want to get to, I don't like, I don't want to be a black belt to be a black belt. I want to, I just want to, I just want to grow skill. I just want to, I want to be able to play jujitsu and I want to be able to play a high level of jujitsu. So that way I can roll with everyone in the club and, you know, have fun, have a back and forth, be able to score some points and have some points scored on me. I want to be able to have fun through the art of jujitsu. It's like learning how to play chess. You learn chess to be able to play chess at a better and higher level, to be able to understand the moves that are going on on the board. Over this weekend, I competed in jujitsu. I won my weight division, got gold in uh, my weight division in the masters over 100 uh, category, 100 kilo category. And I did it. I don't want to sound arrogant. I'm confident. I won easily. Like, sure, my opponents, they gave me a run for my money and I had to make sure that I had the right strategy and you know did the right things, right times, all these sorts of things. I had a fuckload of fun going out there and just doing my thing. The first match was very much, I felt like he wanted to throw me. He was going for very strategic grips, gripping me low on my sleeve here. And I like the positioning that he was going in, it felt like he wanted to either hit me with a Nuchimata or uh, a Sotagari or something like that. Where he was setting up, I was like, okay, I'm not playing this game. I'm gonna play my way and I'm here to do jujitsu. So I wanna get this first one off, off you know, to, to my standard. In my head, the whole time I'm thinking, be first, be first, be first, be first. Because the moment that you're second, you're not going to be the one to be able to determine the fight. You're not gonna be the one to determine how the role goes. So I thought, fuck it, I need to pull guard. I need to get into jujitsu because I don't wanna stand here and you know fuck around grip fighting. I wanna make sure I can take the fight to the floor and do it on my terms, set up my guard, and then get on top and play my top game. So I went through my B strategy to be able to get to my A strategy. I immediately broke his grips, took the fight to the floor, pulled guard, took, took into my closed guard, set up my spider lasso guard. We've been drill, drilling spider lasso or variations of lasso guard for the last eight weeks. So it's hard in my neurology because I've been disciplined and doing those sessions over and over and over. The reason why I could set up the fight in that way, because we were deliberately training my B game for the last eight odd weeks. So I took that and I did exactly the plan. I executed my plan because I was disciplined enough to be able to pull the trigger and go. There's no negotiating. It was like, okay, what is my, what's my field allowing me? What is my experience allowing me? Okay, he wants me to do this. So it looks like he's going to be very 
very much in a stand-up game, grip fighting, because he wants to go for a throw. So what I'm going to do is I'm no, going to negate the aspect of getting thrown, and I'm going to take the fight into my B strategy so I can get back into A strategy so I can streamline and move ahead. And then I finish with a submission. It's a bit of a dick move submission. I finish with a smother choke. I just basically suffocated him with my chest, and I got the win. Had my hand raised, and I thought, cool. First one's off my back. Second fight, it was points-based. I didn't get to submit him, but I won 19 nil. And am I saying this like bragging or anything like that? No, I'm saying it because I train for the last three years, an average of four sessions a week, week in, week out, regardless of what's going on. And that level of discipline allowed me to have the freedom to get the gold medal. Because I put in the fucking hard work here for jujitsu, I got the reward. Now, could something have happened? Yeah, something did happen. When we went to the absolute, to the open weight, where it was all weight categories in masters blue belts competing, I got fucking smashed. I'm gonna put up a video here of what happened to me um, in, the start of the, in the start of the match. He hit me with one of the best ankle pick single leg takedowns I've ever experienced and I've ever watched. The dude grabbed my collar, ankle picked my uh, left leg, and then sent me fucking flying to the point where I had to land in half guard. It was ridiculous. So I got smashed. Did that go to my plan? Absolutely not. However, I had the resources and all the training to back me up to the point where I had to go from my B game to my C game to play guard and do the things that I didn't want to do. I literally had to stay on the bottom because there was no way that I could sweep him. I had no fine motor control. I had no dexterity. I had a lot of problems being able to hold on to grips, adrenaline dumps, you know, all these sorts of things. It is what it is. So I know moving forward that where I need to direct my hard work and my discipline in that aspect is I need to come up with a better C game. My A game and my B game seem to work, but my C game is fucking dog shit. So I need to work on that to be able to make sure that I can play guard comfortably and to be able to uh, figure out a strategy so that I can move from C to B to A. That's the idea behind discipline is you learn what the field is allowing you to do and there's going to be holes in your game. You're going to be able to know that, yeah, hard work's going to pay off, but if you don't have the right, the right lens to be able to view things through, there's going to be holes in, in your game. There's going to be holes in your strategy. There's going to be holes inside of who you are. So you need to be able to plug those through more discipline. The idea about getting ahead in life and doing better is not about becoming lazier, about you know happenstance and chance and stuff like that. It's always about applying yourself, applying more direct. It's about, it's, a, it's directness is what it is. It's about being direct with what you want and shining a lens on, shining a light on the things that you're not good at as well. I know there's a lot of things that I need to improve on, specifically with jujitsu. Obviously, I'm only a shitty blue belt. The pathway forward for me here is to be able to expose where my weaknesses are. So when I got the video sent through to me of the match that I lost, the only match that I lost yesterday, it was painful. My ego really didn't want to look at it. But then I watched all the ways that I fucked up. So all of the ways that I fucked up for me to get better is because I knew I didn't have fine motor controls, my grips were shot and everything like that. I was going for Hail Mary passes. I was going for like a loop choke. I was going for wrist locks. I was going for things that I could get a really fast submission so that I could get the match over and done with. Is that how I should be fighting? Probably not. <laughs> going for a Hail Mary pass when you're you know stuck on bottom and then you get smashed chest to chest half guard. It's not a good place to be. And then he took my back and ended up uh, strangling me. So, but the strangle was across face and that's, it was forcing my jaw across, whole other story. So what I'm saying here, long-winded way of saying is shine a light on all the things that you don't want to do through having a hard conversation with yourself. Aligning it to jujitsu, it's know the things that you're weak at. Practice the things that you're good at. Yes, absolutely. But practice the things that you're shit at even more. Like, I hate being on bottom. I hate being stuck in side control. I hate being stuck in turtle. Like all these places I deliberately put myself into because I know I'm shit at it. I need to improve at those places. So how else are you meant to get better at the areas that you're lacking if you're not bullying, putting yourself into those places? So the same thing goes for your relationship. If you know your communication in your relationship isn't up to scratch and you don't know how to communicate your needs, you don't know how to communicate without starting a fight, you need to work on communication. You need to study communication. You need to study linguistics. You need to study maybe couples counseling or coaching or some avenue to be able to make sure that you become proficient and confident and competent inside of that domain. If you're not proficient inside of the bedroom, do things to be able to make sure that you know that that's your, if that's your weakness, that you're working on it. If you know that you're not spending quality time with your kids, then spend more quality time with your kids. Wherever you know the parts of your life that you're lacking, put more time, effort, and energy into those things. Pay someone to be able to teach you how to do it. Hire a coach, hire a mentor, do co uh, courses, do programs, do books, do all these different things. That like We are in the information age and we are starved, starved of wisdom because there's not enough people out there that are actually applying the practices to be able to make their lives better.
the ease of access of technology that we have sitting in front of us with this anxiety rectangle that I'm recording this on. You have the ability to do be, have and experience anything that you want in this life, but you're not willing to have the hard conversations and to become more disciplined in your life to be able to have that fuck yes life. You're deliberate. You're aiming at that specific North Star. You're aiming at that life that you want to create. However, if you're not doing all the steps necessary to be able to create that and become the person necessary to be able to create that fuck yes life, don't expect it to be handed to you on a silver platter. You need to be able to put in the work. You need to be able to put in the sacrifice and know exactly what you're aiming at. Because if you're not aiming at something deliberate, how the fuck are you meant to know when you go off course? How are you meant to know when you arrive there? If you don't have a clear set of criteria saying that this is where I am, this is where I'm going, and this is the path that I need to go to be able to follow to become the person necessary that can create that life, you're not going to do it. You need to be able to be deliberate. And the reason why I'm talking about being deliberate, talking about creating my fuck yes life is because I'm creating a mastermind program. I've gotten to the level of success that I've gotten to through about $60,000 worth of personal professional development through courses, programs, mentorships, so on and so forth. Hundreds of books, hundreds, thousands of fucking hours of study and application. I have a very set, solid philosophy for every area of life that I can help you guys with. The first month that we're going to be diving into is going to be based on mental, emotional health and wellness. It's going to be based on the mental philosophy that I have to be able to get me to the standards that I have right now, to the success that I have right now, the relationship, the finances and everything like that. I have the life that I have because of all the success, the, the sacrifices, because of the deliberate execution of my plan. I know where I need to improve in my life. I know I need to keep improving with my emotional regulation, my communication with my family. I know that I have to keep improving with technology and time being present with the family as well. My mind is always constantly going 100 miles an hour. So I know that I have to put a lot of work into being really present and to be the man that I, I need to be around my family. Is that easy for me? Absolutely not. I'd much rather be doing this sort of stuff. I'd much rather be coaching. I'd much rather be you know, giving as much as I can because that allows me to ramp myself up and to be in top gear and to be pushing you know, 7,000 RPM at all times. However, my family don't need me to be rah, rah, Dave, like, holy shit, look at this freaking ADHD. Uh, <laughs> look at this ADHD dude going off. They don't need me to do that. They need me to slow down. They need me to be stable, present. They need to be engaged. And that's my big weakness. And that's the thing that I'm constantly working on. However, to get me to that level of success and fulfillment that I have in my life right now, I have learnt so many good lessons, so many great philosophies to be able to embody and also skills and tips and tricks to be able to change my subconscious to make this easier. Because the big thing where a lot of you guys are, you don't actually know what the thing that's holding you back. You feel stuck for some reason. And the thing that's keeping you stuck, it's not your behaviors directly. It's indirectly your behaviors. Directly, it's your subconscious because of your beliefs, your values, and any other programming that you've had since you were you know, zero to seven years old from authority figures, your parents, and stuff like that. That's the stuff that's holding you back. So if I can be your unreasonable best friend to be able to help you transform your life into something that is amazing, that is creating your fuck yes life, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it together. And I'm going to hold you to a fucking high standard to be able to make sure that you're not pussyfooting around, that you're all in for your life. You're all in to create this fuck yes life because it's meaningful, because you deserve it. Because you have unlimited potential, you can do be, have, and experience anything that you want to in your life. It's up to you to choose it. It's up to you to choose it. So I'm not putting it out officially yet. I'm going to open it up to the first five people that message me, and we're going to do it intimately, as a small group. Then we're gonna open it up to the public. But you need to be able to make sacrifices necessary to be able to do this to the best of your ability and apply and go all in. I'm not taking anyone that's fucking around. This is for serious people that are out there that actually wanna transform your life. If you wanna transform your life, all you need to do is down in the description, it's my email address, dave at risemovement.com.au and you need to send me a subject line that says transform. All I want you to do you send me transform in the subject line and your name, your phone number, and obviously I've got your email address and say that you're ready. From there, I'm gonna audition you because I'm not taking through stragglers. I'm not taking through people that are gonna half ass it. You need to be serious. So first five, go. Have an amazing week and I'll see you guys inside of my fuck yes life. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for subscribing and leaving a review. It really helps us out. Until next time, take care and much love.